We're back at the Lake Superior Railroad Museum for another of our behind the scenes tours. And we thank you all for watching. We thank you every time you share this with somebody. And we thank you more if you go to lsrm.org and slash memberships and join up to become a part of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. We're talking about this particular engine right here today. And it is the result of a labor dispute. In the 1920s, the railroads were experimenting with their branch lines and gas and diesel powered motor cars. And they were running those motor cars in place of short trains. And they were doing it short staffed. They weren't putting a fireman on, only a conductor and engineer on these branch lines with these new diesel or gas powered motor cars. And guess what? The fireman wanted a piece of that action. All through the 1920s, they lobbied over and over and over again to get some sort of agreement to put firemen back in the cabs of these newfangled pieces of equipment. Keeping in mind, of course, when we say firemen, we're not talking about the ding ding clang clang Dalmatian guys. We're talking about the person that threw the coal into the boiler on a steam locomotive and later, of course, on the diesel road shotgun. And finally, the diesel case came out. Started with some lawsuits by the Brotherhood of Locomotive Engineers and the Brotherhood of Locomotive Firemen. And on February 28, 1937, the diesel case was settled. And the railroads agreed to put firemen back as helpers on any engine, whether it be a steam, diesel, or these newfangled motor cars, over 90,000 pounds. Pretty good deal, right? And the union thought, victory! because they could not imagine building a piece of railroad equipment that weighed less than 45 tons. Whether it be a motor car, diesel engine, or an old steamer, it just wasn't gonna happen. Well, guess what? Started out with a company called Whitcomb in 1939, 45 tons, followed by the Euclid Company, also 1939, 45 tons. Atlas started making a diesel electric locomotive in 1940, at 45 tons. And then General Electric got into the act. General Electric made the 45 ton right under the limit switching diesel. And this is one of those models. We're going to show it to you today. General Electric was by far the most prolific of all the manufacturers of the 45 ton exclusion to that February 28, 1937 diesel case. And this was the model that they made. It was 45 tons in weight. It had 600 horsepower. Under the hood here, on each side of the cab, was 150 horsepower Cummins diesel. General Electric made it, of course, so it was a diesel electric, which meant it produced electricity for the traction motors. Of which, by the way, there are only two. One traction motor for each truck. So instead of having a traction motor on each axle, they had to have a chain drive. So it would chain drive from the axle it was running to the other one in the truck. That was to keep the weight down and also because of expense. These were sold mostly to industrial applications. That's another reason why the trucks are so close together for the tight turns in and out of plants. This one was built for Minnesota Power in Minnesota's glorious iron range as they were building the Laskin Energy Center up at Hoyt Lakes, a community built for the Erie Mining Company and their taconite plant, which was being built at the exact same time. So the engine was first used to help build the plant and bring in raw materials. And then once the plant was up and running, it was originally coal fired. And this is what switched the coal cars in and out of the plant. It did so with remote control, which was kind of neat. It was one of the first Vestron remote control engines ever produced. That's what those lights on the side of the cab indicate. They tell you when the engine is moving forward or reverse, so you can know that it is remote control and there's no one in the cab. The person is actually running the engine with what was called a belly pack, standing on the ground or riding up in the front, but usually never in the cab. One time, it went into the lake when that Vestron system didn't work so well, didn't stop the engine as it was going into the engine house, busted through the back wall and into the water right by the back of the plant. In 2003, Minnesota Power generously donated this locomotive to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum, where we do just what they did with it, use it for switching applications. And here it is on one of its runs, switching out the Pier B. Now, Pier B was at one time an industrial site right on the waterfront here in downtown Duluth. It's now a luxury resort hotel.
but we were storing some equipment on there and as you can see it had to leave before they could start construction this is how the engine was used at white lakes it's how we use it today as i said this was a remote control engine but that didn't mean there wasn't controls in the cab and i'll show you those a tiny engine has a tiny cab remember i told you this was a remote control well here is that belly pack that i was talking about this fit around your back and shoulder and these are actually the controls to move the engine forward or reverse or how fast it was made by the vestron company here of course is where the engineer would sit controls as usual except for one noticeable feature that made this perfect for industrial use for only one person to run remember the remote control was for one person on the ground but how about if you wanted to uncouple from up here without having to go down and pull the lever you push this button and an air powered compressor automatically lifted that pin and uncoupled your engine from the cars it was pulling kind of a neat feature of course you have all your regular controls that you would normally have in a locomotive General Electric made these until about 1956 and they were quite popular many like this one are still running and we want you to be with us still tomorrow for yet another episode live kind of from the Lake Superior Railroad Museum in the meantime stay alive by washing your hands covering your cough don't touch your face one place to be if you're sick and that is at home keep your social distance at all times join us again tomorrow and in the meantime let's take care of each other <laughs>